Hello everyone and welcome back to this next lecture. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about electric vehicles. And electric vehicles now are all over the news. And this is probably one of the hottest domains at the moment, right? The reason is simple. Electric vehicles have become so popular that now you'll see that almost every now and then you'll see every few, maybe every one out of every fourth car is an electric vehicle. Many countries have even gone so far as to make a pledge that they will phase out all fossil fuel based cars in the next three or four decades. That is by 2050, many countries have said that they will stop manufacturing fossil fuel based cars. Of course, it is still to be seen whether this pledge is realizable. But most importantly, we've reached this stage. That is electric vehicles now have now become viable and are now a practical alternative to fossil fuel cars. EV manufacturers like Tesla are now in the news almost every day. Every day when you open your news, you see something about Tesla. You see something about Elon Musk. In the year 2020, Tesla surpassed even companies like Mercedes to become one of the most valuable car companies. Just imagine how far electric vehicles have come if an electric vehicle manufacturer has actually taken the number one position. This just shows how much electric vehicle have grown in the past few decades and this growth is only going to keep going on. Very soon you will see very few fossil fuel based cars and almost every one of them will be almost electric vehicles. So now the question is, what does this have to do with power electronics? That's a very, very good question. Where does power electronics come into electric vehicles? Now let's talk a little about cars in general. A normal conventional fossil fuel based vehicle has a combustion engine that burns fuel and this fuel is either diesel or it could be pet petrol or gasoline depending on where you are it's either called petrol in some places it's called gasoline in some places it's called benzene but it's typically a more processed fuel. The burning of this fuel causes the engine to rotate and since the engine is connected to the transmission system the transmission system begins to rotate. And of course, there is the gear system and eventually this is connected to the axle which eventually causes the wheels to rotate. So this is how a usual car works. Now in an electric vehicle, the fuel tank and the combustion engine are no longer there. Right? We do not have a fuel tank, we do not have the combustion engine, we don't burn fuel anymore. The gears and the transmission system and of course the wheels are still there because remember, the car still has to roll. It's not going to fly. So we still need the gears, the transmission system, the mechanical system and the wheels. We still need them. They might change a little, but they are still there. So what else has changed? This is a block diagram of an electric vehicle. As I already said, the fuel tank and the combustion engine are gone. In an electric vehicle, the fuel tank is replaced by a battery. Right? Now, even fossil fuel cars have a battery. That battery is usually either an alkaline battery or an acid based battery. But the purpose of that battery is mainly to start your car and number two to power the electronics in your car like your dashboard, like your stereo and things like that. The battery in fossil fuel based cars does not have that much power that it can actually move the car. In an electric vehicle, it is different. This battery has the capacity to actually power the entire car. Now the combustion engine in a fuel base, in a fossil fuel base car is now replaced in an electric vehicle by the power converter in the motor. Right? The motor is now coupled to the transmission system through gears and eventually to the axles and the wheels. Right? That's the rest of the mechanical system. There might be differences between the mechanical system of an electric vehicle versus that of a fossil fuel based car. It, nothing is absolutely identical, but the concept is pretty much the same. So it is mainly here that the change has happened. Now, what is different in this battery with respect to the battery of a fossil fuel based car? As we already said, the batteries used in an electric vehicle are high capacity batteries and usually they are lithium ion. They are not the usual alkaline batteries that you find in a fossil fuel based cars. These 
Even research in lithium ion is a very hot topic and it is constantly trying to make these batteries smaller and more high capacity because only then can these electric vehicles grow bigger because remember we need these electric vehicles not just to be small cars but also to be vans, buses and even trucks. So therefore it's important that the capacity of these batteries increases continuously. The electric wave motors are usually AC motors like induction motors or synchronous motors, usually. Again, here too this is a hot topic of research. There are always special machines which are being designed and which are trying to be used in electric vehicles so that they give even more improved performance. Now comes the power converter. So, this is a very simple block diagram of a power converter. A real power converter in an electric vehicle is going to be way more complicated than this, but this is just for the purpose of understanding. The role of the power converter is to control the flow of power from the battery to the motor and also vice versa. It will also go from the motor to the battery. That will come very soon. This power converter is built out of static devices. Right? Most importantly, there is nothing moving in this power converter. Now, there are two types of static devices. There are insulated gate bipolar transistors called IGBTs and there are also other types of devices being used. Again, this is also a topic of research right? because it is always constantly trying to improve the amount of capacity each and every device has with respect to the size that it occupies. Now, there are also diodes and the purpose of these diodes is basically to freewheel the power. Now, the, this converter has an input and an output. The battery which produces a DC voltage is the input to the converter and this is the input. These, are, these two terminals are the input terminals and this is where the battery is connected. The output of this converter are these two terminals shown here and this is the AC output of the converter. Right? So, the way it works is we can turn these devices on and off. So, these devices called S1, S2, S3 and S4 can be turned on and off by control so as to control the amount of power that is available at this AC output. We can control the voltage, we can control the current, we can control just about everything. Why? By just turning on and turning off these devices. So, this is the role of the power converter. Now, it's important to understand that this is a very rough sketch of a power converter. A real power converter in an electric vehicle is going to be way more complicated. There may be several other components. For example, it is also possible to have supercapacitors to improve transient performance. For example, when a car needs to accelerate, you don't want to draw all that energy only from the battery. You might want to draw it from another source as well, such as a supercapacitor. So, let me talk a little about what is the real challenge in an electric vehicle. So, for example, the main idea behind an electric vehicle and this is what most people ask when you are transitioning from a fossil fuel based car to an electric vehicle is, can I get the same performance in an electric vehicle that I get from a fossil fuel based car? And this is always even more important when you have been driving a high performance car. If you have been driving something like a sports utility vehicle like an SUV or even a high-end car like a Mercedes or something else which has a considerable amount of power, you would like to know whether by driving an electric vehicle, you get the same feel that you get with, an with a fossil fuel based car. So, for example, what does that mean? These are a few diagrams that I drew. This is the speed of the car. This is the torque produced by the motor. So, for example, most important we ask is acceleration. Of course, any car, one of the parameters is how much time does it take to go from zero to a certain speed. This is the acceleration time. That is, if I start the car and I slam that accelerator, how long does it take to go from, let's say, zero to 60 kilometers per hour? This is the acceleration. So, for example, here is the speed. The car is driving at a low speed, let's say 20, 30 kilometers per hour. And if we are now entering a highway, we want to accelerate. Right. Let's say for example, here I am now in Germany. In Germany, which is very famous for the autobahns, where speeds are pretty much unlimited, 
when you are entering the highway, you would want to slam that accelerator all the way to the floor. In that case, the question is, how much speed can you achieve? In order to achieve this drastic increase in speed, you need to produce such a torque. You need to produce an accelerating torque. And that's what this is about. The converter must be able to generate a positive torque and supply it to the motor such that the motor now experiences such a positive torque. Only then can the car accelerate. Now, the reverse is also possible. For example, you are driving your car, you see a red light, you need to stop, right? And sometimes you may need to stop really fast. You may need to stop in just 50 meters or so. So now the question is, in that case, when you're braking, you need to decrease your speed, maybe drastically as well. In that case, the power converter needs to generate a negative torque. This negative torque is called a braking torque. If it produces a braking torque, now the motor is supplying power back to the battery. This is called regenerative braking. In a fossil fuel bear car, you are going to brake only purely by a mechanical brake, which means when you brake in a fossil fuel based car, you are dissipating mechanical energy as friction. That's it. Whereas in an electric car, you are converting mechanical energy back to electrical energy and storing it back in the battery. So therefore, you are better utilizing energy. So now the question here is, this is the challenge. The power converter needs to produce a voltage and needs to supply a current such that we can always produce these torque. Because remember, as I said, most importantly, if you are driving a car, you want to do exactly the same things you did with an electric vehicle that you were doing before with your fossil fuel based car. This electric vehicle needs to respond to human operation, human commands, in exactly the same way a fossil fuel based car responds. Only then will the adoption of electric vehicles be high. And that is a challenge. This is where power electronics comes in. As power electronics engineers, we are going to be controlling this power converter in such a way that the electric vehicle can behave exactly the same way as a fossil fuel based car. That is a challenge. So this little lecture was just to describe what happens or rather what is the power electronics challenge in an electric vehicle. So if you have any doubts, of course, feel free to ask. Otherwise, I will see you in the next lecture where we are going to talk about the next hot topic, which is smart grids. So, thank you so much for listening and see you soon. Goodbye for now.